Hey guys, Heavy Arms 45 here. And recently I went to the movies to see the movie Glass. Um it was a good movie. It I I'm on say they really gave me a little bit of feeling that I felt bad on some parts. But because I felt bad about some parts of it, I decided, hey, let me check out a review. And see, look at other people's reviews that were on uh, YouTube. And look at some other people's reviews. I have agreed with um, the guy from Nostalgia Critic that said his views on I'm like, yeah, I had those feelings. Then I'm like, let me get somebody else's spoiler review of it. And I'm listening to the beginning of their spoiler review. And I'm listening. And something just starts bowling up in me. And they start trying to sophisticate this idea of if you watch the show, nobody's a villain. I mean, nobody's a hero, nobody's a villain. There are, there's no hero in the show. And I'm like, that's not exactly the case. I'm going to try not to spoil any of it in case anyone who listens to this wants to watch it. Um, but I disagree with the Screen Junkies news um, way of looking at it. They're like, there was no hero in it. The hero was us. And I'm like, what the hell? What the? What are you talking about? The hero was us. No. There was a logical hero in this movie. Now, by the time you get into it, there are several villains in it. There's a lot of people who feel like they're doing stuff for justifiable reasons. Which, if you have to try and make a justifiable reason for what you're doing, a lot of times, you're not being a hero. A hero saves people. It doesn't try to stunt people from doing what they do best. When you look at, if, when you look at the part where... In the trailer, I'm going to go ahead and say, you see them in the war. She's trying to prove to them that they're not heroes. When, you know, when we've seen what they can do. Um, I'm not going to, I'm trying not to spoil it. I'm really hell. Um, I'm not trying to say too much about it. But, you have the beast. The beast who... Even in Split, he only talks about being able to find those who, well, protect those who were hurt, who have been forsaken. He's supposed to be the hero. And the person that he embodies about this and his main person that he's trying to protect is Kevin, the guy in the guy that he actually is, where these personalities first originate from. His job is to make sure that that person that embodies all of them, who, if it wasn't him, wouldn't be there, was stay alive. But he took it over the step because he decides to kidnap cheerleaders. He decides to kidnap little girl. He's always deciding to kidnap people that... He feels has not gone through sorrow and he feels that they are not broken. So he decides to break them for breaking other people. But even though he feels like he's there to like avenge the broken, he does it by killing the innocent. Yes, bullying is bad. And yes, he's trying to help people like the girl in the first movie that was like being hurt by her uncle and stuff like that. He saw her as broken, but that doesn't mean that he does whatever he wants to. And I guess that's the difference between vigilante justice and being a villain. Vigilante justice, we're like Batman and other people in Justice League and Marvel is I'm going to beat you up or beat you up so that you can go to jail a lot of times. And that's what we consider a hero. Then we get into the anti-hero way of doing things. Where I'm going to literally kill you for what you did. Hence why you have people like Deadpool. Um, Green Arrow in the Arrowverse. You have people who say that 
certain people should just go ahead and die for what they do. And in those cases, they're put to jail for those reasons. Like the whole storyline of the Arrowverse is that literally because he did all these crimes, he's going to jail. Even though every season he saves Star City every single time. But that still made so to me, Bruce Willis character, which uh was called Overseer, Overseer was supposed to be this character that was a hero. He regrettably didn't think himself a hero because he just always thought himself weak. And it was the reason he thought himself to be weak, like other than when he was going out patrolling, because he felt like he was making a difference at that point. And when this doctor comes to him and tells him that, hey, maybe you're just an ordinary person. You know, that takes him back to the idea of when he was in Unbreakable, where I'm just a normal guy. I can't do anything special. But at the same time, he knows what he's done. But this idea of just doubt. And it's the same thing for characters that's in combo. So you've had characters that have had moments where someone tries to make things, you know, maybe... I'm sh Batman has had moments like this where maybe I'm not doing the right thing. Maybe I should go ahead and put up the cow. Maybe Gotham would be better off without me being there. You know, even though he knows that it's crime rate, the whole idea of the White Knight storyline is that Batman is a recluse. He's causing problems. He's created all this damage and that maybe he's not good for the city. That's the whole point that Joker's making in. Well, yeah, we'll say that. That Joker's making in that is that maybe your Dark Knight is not a great knight. And because of all the damage that he does. So, that's the same thing that we have with Bruce Willis' character. A hero's issue that always happens. Then, you have Mr. Glass, who does not even pretend to be a hero. He's not even a hero in his whole mind. He knows what he did was wrong. He knows that it was wrong for him to create that airplane crash, set that fire to that hotel, and that train wreck. But he knew that if he was able to prove that there was someone like Bruce Willis' character that was out there, that made sense that if there's somebody stronger than him, he was the opposite pole of that. Which, the question I had when we got into watching uh, that movie was if we're going with the idea going back to Umbrella that there's two poles and then we bring in um James McAvoy's character uh the beast well where's his you know everybody's supposed to have a opposite pole your pole is supposed to be the thing that basically if there for every mentally challenged person there's a genius is the idea that there is not saying that Bruce Willis' character is an idiot, but there's the idea of there's always an opposite. There's a north to a south. There's an east to a west. And so the question in my mind was, if there's a person that's the beast, that is this person who just from sheer personality was created to make this apex predator to be able to hunt down and basically kill anyone, there has to be someone who's opposite to him. And it shouldn't be Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis' character was supposed to be the opposite of um, Mr. Glass, Samuel Jack. Samuel Jackson's character is supposed to be, yes, my body's broke, but my mind's the strongest thing I have. Sort of like Superman, where Lex is a normal, a normal body person, but his brain is works at a more higher at a more genius level than other people's. And that's why I thought. And when I listen to Screen Junkie talking about, yeah, you know, no one's here. I'm like, no, I'm very sure that Bruce Willis' character was a hero. And even though he was a hero, they... Even though his he was a hero, 
they want to say that no, he wasn't a hero. And in the end, they said that no one won, which was also wrong. Once um, Mr. Glass figured out his purpose, the end of it is the fulfillment of what he felt was his purpose. In the end, Samuel Jackson won. His character won. What a twist. The whole point was that the twist, it was a twist within a twist in a way. You know, you're thinking one thing, this thing's figured out that, hey, this is, uh, and then, so, you turn, you flip the card over, uh, you flip over the face down card showing that, hey, it's actually, you know, you thought it was just a regular playing card. No, it's actually an Uno card. Then you flip that card over again, it's not even an Uno card. This actually is a 3D chess, and you're like, where in the world? I had a card. Where did the card turn to a chessboard? That's what kind of happened when you watch Glass. There is basically a layer on top of another layer. But to get to that bottom layer, you had to get through that first layer. We were working, even in my mind when I watched the movie, it was me trying, I'm thinking in the first layer, and once I got understood the second layer, I suddenly get bombarded with the third layer, which was near the end credits. But that right there showed me that, yeah, I, I'm not going to say I disagree with. I was looking for, like in any movie you see, like even when I watched uh, Avengers and Fendi War, you always want the hero to win. But the hero didn't win. Um, the hero... And I'm feeling like with the name of the show, you see that the hero didn't win. It wasn't about the hero. Kind of like Infinity War wasn't about the Avengers. The Infinity War was about Thanos. That is the point of it. This movie was not about how great uh, Bruce Willis was or anything like that. Even the psychologist that was supposed to be trying to help them is basically not sure of herself and was basically going with what they thought and that's what in basically trying to break them down when there's been no, she knows that Bruce Willis character has been doing some good now the other two she's heard of what they've done but she's just in denial I guess I'll say but I, I'm gonna stop it here. Um, my, if you wanna know my review of the movie, it put me in the feels near the end. But I would watch it again. Um, it, it didn't do anything wrong in my mind. It just, it wasn't bad. I just wasn't ready for the end. I guess it. It's kind of slow. It's a slow burn. Uh, to watch it when you're watching the middle part of it, it's a little bit of a slow burn. You've had you have a couple sparks to come out of action, then it's another bit of a slow burn to watch stuff through. Uh, because watching both watching um, that you expect to have you no know, action because you have two big muscular like supposedly strong guys supposed to be fighting each other but it's not a like big epic fight really between them it's sort of like I said a slow burn it's kind of like a character study in a way it's just you no know, like M. Night Shyamalan doesn't do a lot of action show it's a lot more talk talk um, action talk talk it's not bad it's just that that's a slow burn to it. Um, if you don't mind slow burn, because we we know M Night Shyamalan's not big on action, it it's fine. Then you should watch the movie, and I'll catch you later.